Some months ago, it was revealed a small number of Starbucks branches were going cashless. I nearly spat my coffee out. They're not the only ones, of course, that this is becoming the norm, with more and more businesses now refusing notes and coins. Which is why GB News have proudly launched a new campaign, Don't Kill Cash. If you like, you can sign the petition. It's on the website at gbnews.com. Now, some people will welcome this new way of paying, this modern way of paying. It may speed up service at the counter so you can get your hands on that first latte of the day all the more quickly. Look, I'm happy to pay with my phone or contactless, but only where cash is still an option too. But this promise of a convenient experience via cashless payments is fool's gold. It's time to wake up and smell the coffee. This move by companies like Starbucks may look innocent on the face of it, but there are potential dark forces at play. I fear this is part of a wider campaign at government and corporate level to kill cash altogether. And I fear it's about control. As we saw with COVID measures, including lockdowns, masking and vaccine mandates, the push for a cashless society is, in my view, an attack on people power. If you have cash, your spending habits cannot be traced and your funds cannot be frozen in the way that they can be with a digital currency. Don't forget tin pot dictator Justin Trudeau, Canada's tyrannical premier, who froze the bank accounts of truckers who were protesting vaccine mandates. He couldn't have done that with cash. In terms of a cashless society, all roads lead to China. It's the worst case scenario, the thick end of the wedge. Chinese citizens are part of what's called a social credit system, in which people's money is controlled digitally by the government. They have virtual money in their virtual bank accounts, access to which is linked to good behaviour. And with facial recognition cameras everywhere, the public can lose access to their money for the most minor indiscretion. For example, if someone is spotted littering or walking home drunk, not being up to date with their vaccines or guilty of some other perceived crime, this fully digitised system will punish them immediately by stopping them paying for goods in the supermarket or from buying a train ticket. Welcome to hell. With a cashless society, the control is transferred from the people to corporations and the state. And in a cashless society, how can you give your nephew a tenner for their birthday or leave a couple of pound coins for that waiter or waitress that served you so nicely in a cafe? How can you help out a homeless person that needs a few quid to get by? What about the wonderful informality of a retired pensioner cleaning your windows or doing a bit of gardening and receiving a crisp £20 note as a thank you? A cashless society will spell the end of the informal discretionary economy. Cash is human. Cashless is inhuman. Come rain or shine, if you've got some cash on you, you're secure. You're the master of your own destiny, which, of course, increasingly, our leaders don't like. We saw our personal autonomy challenged by lockdowns, stopping you from leaving your house, going to work or deciding who you see. We saw bodily autonomy attacked by vaccine mandates. And if we allow a cashless society to happen, that will be the end of your financial autonomy as well. Cash is king, always has been, always will. Beware the outlets offering the snake oil convenience of cashless. They can hiss off. And fight this at every turn. It's time to put your money where your mouth is.